Okay, so you know how I have this curse on me that makes it to where I can randomly change from male to female depending on the type of water that is applied to my skin? <sighs> Let's just say after remembering that sweat counts as a type of water, I'm going to have to drop TE after today's incident. <sighs> Whatever. Yeah, so for those who are out of the loop, I started my junior year a while ago. Yeah, despite the fact that I live alone, technically, and appear to have a job since, you know, I apparently pay bills, but, you know, that's just the law. I could physically drop out, but considering the state of the commentary community, I need a backup once this place actually dies. That aside, I'm already at odds with the school this year, so it was only a matter of time before I went back to my good old ditching ways. I mean, for one, everyone found out I was a bottom, which hasn't done me any good in school at all. The school budget has been lowered even further somehow, which means we have an even worse video clogging up the school bathroom for whatever reason. On top of that, anytime I try to tell anyone at my school my problems, this happens. What does that even mean? Real people? Implying I'm not just talking to a mirror and wishing I actually had an audience of real people to vent to. Uh, whatever, I need to get my mind off this whole school BS. Um, well, you know, new year, new faces. Um, like my bitching neighbors over there. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Delighted to make your acquaintance. If you have no business here, I'll tell the teacher there's an anime fan hiding in the bathroom, inmate. Okay, okay, maybe I shouldn't have shown you that. Uh, so a second ago I brought up how we have commentary material in the bathroom or something like that. The last two times I remember being here, I remember bringing up how videos tend to be stationed here as a way to make sure kids don't hang out and vape in the bathroom. Honestly, the smartest thing the school has ever done. Well, see, the thing is that I discovered towards the end of last school year that covering one of the video causes is none of the spawn in its place, so I want to see if there's actually an end to this material rabbit hole hidden that's hanging out in the school bathroom, so... How about a gauntlet? This way I don't have to finish the video, wait for school to end in a few hours, get home and cry, you know, the usual. So, let's pick up a video and see what the RNG gods give us starting off. Oh, I, I've made a mistake. So we know So first on this bathroom gauntlet is what looks to be a video by Joshua Pony, formerly known as Joshua Colvy House, also known as someone who I shouldn't be allowed to hit according to the majority of the CC, but since I totally left the CC last June, it doesn't apply to me. Ha ha ha. That being said, the context of this video goes something like this. So in January of 2019, two commentators by the name of Enigma Phantom and Gale Force made a co-op commentary on... Uh... Top 10 Worst Pokemon Abilities. Two more commentators who go by the name Luxor and Kirby Star Warrior did a co-op on Enigma and Gale's video. You know, in any regular scenario, I of all people would be the least qualified person to make a video on Pokemon owing to the fact that I actually want to get Sword and Shield. Oh, and the fact that I've only played Moon and Ultra Moon, but who cares? But thanks to the help of Joshua, this is gonna be a breeze. See, Joshua made a commentary on Luxor's video and I've seen like maybe two seconds of it and I don't like it, so I'm just gonna remove it from the bathroom like the trash it is. Anyways, without further ado, let's start. For this commentary, I'll be using a gate push that I have the, uh, around 10 minutes. This video is going to be a commentary on a commentary on a Pokemon top list. It basically involves strategy on battles. If you ask me, strategy takes a lot of thinking and having the best outcome, an objective thing. Get this in mind, because I'm not going to argue the strategies, but rather the points they made. Let's get started. Wow, I just don't like this context at all. Let me explain why. You see, you don't clarify what videos you're hitting at all, instead only mentioning that it involves strategy and hinting that you probably have little idea what you're getting ready to do. At the same time, we don't know what you're hitting as well, so to do my best normal non-aggressive 11th grade commentator impression, what the fuck is happening? Or wait, was that my aggressive 11th grade commentator voice or was it 
Uh, whatever. Basically, I'm saying we're missing a few pieces in this puzzle, and honestly, because of that, it makes putting the puzzle together no fun because we can't get the full picture. Now, that actually wasn't that bad of an analogy. Guess English is paying off after all. Also, strategy, objective, um, I'll hold on to this one for now. Starting off the list, we have the ability Illuminate. So unless you actually want to run into a lot of wild Pokemon, this ability completely sucks. If you forgot to stock up on repels when you're entering your route and have a Pokemon that leads your party with the ability Illuminate, the rate at which you encounter Pokemon is increased by 100%. This is why you check your bag in advance to check for repels or buy more before heading off if you don't want to worry about running into wild mons. Or if you can, stay out of the grass in the first place. Glad to see you're enjoying the Relic Castle theme, Enigma, but can you turn it down? We should be able to hear what Gale is saying. Though quite frankly, I wish the music overpowered her voice completely so that we wouldn't have to hear this point of hers. Gale, this does nothing to change Relic's point about Illuminate. Just because there are ways to get around the ability, that doesn't mean the ability isn't bad. But that's implying the suggestions you gave were actually good ones. Try to stay out of the grass? Yeah. Real easy to do with the countless areas in the games where going through grass, caves, and other areas for wild Pokemon to pop out is required. Ignoring the fact that she said if you can. True, but when you really think about this in the context of Pokemon, does that really even help much? Like, think about it. In pretty much all grass-related routes, grass is everywhere! So even if you find a small path with no grass, you'll still be bombarded with more not too long after anyways. As much as possible would, at the end of the day, not help matters. Now, your statement about stocking up on repels wouldn't be too bad. If it did anything to counter the possibility of somebody forgetting to stock up on them. Ignoring the fact that not only wild Pokemon don't always appear, but it's common sense to at least try to get enough repels. I'm looking in my book of arguments, where does this necessarily invalidate that possibility? Yeah, it's common sense, but that doesn't make forgetting any less of a possibility. It's common sense for me to stop a car by pressing the brakes, but you shouldn't be unprepared for the moment I forget and try putting the car in park while a car is driving in my direction. Yes, that is something I did. I am sorry, Pre. Don't run away from me, you bitch! That is crazy considering me personally, I hate running into wild Pokemon non-stop, leaving this ability at least at number 10 because you can always stock up on repels and it doesn't really sound that bad. Illuminate only takes effect when the Pokemon with the ability is in the front of your party. So here's a crazy idea, Relic Boy. Switch your team around. Okay, since neither Kirby nor Luxor actually argue this point, I think it's fair game for me to throw this point against the wall real quick, because while yes, that may sound like a sound solution on paper, think about it like this. If this Pokemon is at the front of my team, that likely means it's going to be very reliable there. Swapping Pokemon is a process that isn't too hard, but it takes up time and gives the opponent a free hit, as far as I know at least. In various scenarios, that free hit can be problematic and it can lead to you losing the battle. Also, yes, they have other abilities, but but if I have this ability on, I probably have it on for a reason. I mean, unless there's an upgraded version of it somewhere, then your point would have merit, but I just don't see that, honestly. Secondly, let's have a look at the list of Pokemon that can have this ability that you show, shall we? Volby, Watchhog, the Staryu line, the Chinchu line, and Morlo. All of these Pokemon have alternate abilities, so it's not like you're restricted to Illuminate or anything. Hey, remember when I said that having ways to get around the ability doesn't change the point about the ability being bad? Yeah. This is a constant problem throughout the commentary. A good chunk of Enigma and Gale's points are bringing up ways to avoid the ability rather than actually giving any reason for why it's good. So, what's so good about it? I know the answer, but if you're not going to bring up the good, then why bring it up? The answer for the good is an easier time of get, trying to get the Pokemon you want on your team. Feel free to add a counter argument or more on the good. Um, no. You're misunderstanding a lot right now. Let me explain. You're acting like Kirby stated that, well, basically, you're acting like Kirby was making a point that said something was good, but didn't explain why. However, Kirby was only explaining that Enigma and Gale's points weren't properly arguing why the abilities their target was complaining about weren't bad, and thus not really explaining how these abilities could be considered good. Honest to God, I don't understand how you can misunderstand him to a degree this extreme. So that's so far off from where Kirby was going. Now, this ability is only available for three Pokemon, but number eight is Trunt. Basically, this ability lets the Pokemon slack off, slacking, and Durant attack every other turn. He has a Durant it's his ability, but do you know what can happen in those every other turn? You can just kill the Pokemon, you can sell, you can heal, you can do anything, and it will let you loaf it around. So, in a nutshell, this ability just sucks, and making Norman slacking much easier, even at a low level. 
Actually, funny story about that. There's a move that Jared can learn called Entrainment, which gives the opponent the ability to Yinger. Jared can give hope to Trent to other Pokemon and potentially for switches. Thanks for not retaking your line or cutting down to the stab right there. Slacking has access to recovery and slack off, and it has incredible stats alongside a move pool that depth of a Mirianus trench, making it a viable staller and tank. Okay, that Durant example of yours is incredibly shaky. Zero, sure, you can get use out of it, but said usage is specifically by having the opponent suffer from the ability. If a strategy is to give the ability to your opponent for the sake of hindering them, that would just speak for why it would be a bad ability for a Pokemon to have. So basically, a double-edged sword. You're going to ignore the fact that this can apply to your situation as well? In fact, you say something good about it, and yet you say it's a bad thing? At least that's what you're implying. Next time, clarify. Uh, I... Um... How much longer is this? Are you fuck- Okay, so I'd bother spending a lot more time than I should actually wrapping my head around this argument, but to sum this one up, you're arguing this in various directions that don't head towards actually understanding what Kirby was talking about. See, Enigma pointed out how this ability could be swapped out with an opponent's ability using some other ability which could hinder the opponent. Kirby brought up how if its best usage was being swapped out to hinder another opponent, then that would just go on to show exactly why it is considered a bad ability. Now, for whatever reason, you just just went all crazy and argued this in okay what exactly were you trying to do here um i guess argue that this could be seen as a double-edged sword okay and what exactly does this have to do with what kirby was saying it can be applied to a situation what situation you mean the fact that in a scenario where you try swapping out the ability with someone else's in battle if you hold on to it you're the one that's screwed because if so Yes, that's a problem. I mean, the problem is more than the fact that it's a double-edged sword, but that's one of the reasons the ability could be considered more problematic, if you know. Also, if the mod that Archeops is going up against is that much of a threat, there's another solution. Just switch it out. You heard it here first, folks. If a Pokemon is in a bad position, just switch it out. Clearly, this makes up for defeatist having Archeops' offensive stats. But seriously, out of all the workarounds you two brought up so far, this is probably the worst one. Because even though your previous suggestions didn't change how the ability itself was flawed, they were at least trying to bring up ways to make your Pokemon viable. This one doesn't even do that. Because telling the to switch out Archeops is essentially telling him to completely ignore the problem, which doesn't even show the benefits of using Archeops on its own, let alone its ability. Ignore the fact that he should be thinking about the situation objectively, if not subjectively. I don't care if it's his opinion. Pokemon battles are about strategy. If you're going to make a claim like that, then I have the least to believe that you care about what's objective and what's subjective. You claim that he's lazy, and yet you're being lazy yourself because I want to see what's given to me. You can put on hypocrisy, but I'm not wrong. Not to mention, I focus on what I said in the beginning of the video with the hiccup. You heard it here, folks. Joshua has no idea what he's talking about. See, Joshua, here, it seems like you're arguing something that wasn't even implied. You say Luxor needs to argue this up objectively since it's about strategy, uh, except no? Luxor was simply saying that if your only consolation for why a bad ability is not a bad ability is by swapping it out, then there's a reason it should be considered a bad ability, and the point that Gale and Enigma were trying to make was just not that good. What you say seems to have very little correlation with what he said, and honestly, now I have a headache. But seriously, nothing about this screams argument about subjective or objective. It's like if we're at a funeral together and you put a gun to my head and scream, WHAT SLOPE X INTERCEPT? What does that even mean? So that means that it only works in double battles, you're probably gonna need two electric types because they're the only types that can have this ability. And let's just take a moment to realize that most of the game are in single battles. So in a nutshell, the ability sucks unless you're willing to capture two electric types with those abilities for just a couple of double battles. As for your single player or campaign argument, places like the Battle Subway, several trainer double battles, and the Pokemon World Tournament poke holes here. Also in Generation 5, you can do wild double battles in the dark grass. He said that most of the game is in single battles. He never said double battles don't exist, just that it's the minority. So bringing them up does nothing. To crush Hellstar 1224, an opinion means nothing if you can't back it up or say why it is your opinion. He is being lazy to not put the effort to come up with an argument. If you want to argue that he did, then why should he do single battles with a plus or minus ability? Basing opinions on facts can also lead to someone being shot in the foot by another fact, if that was the case. I expect effort on your part, but no, it's a disgrace to true strategist. It all returns to nothing. It all comes tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. I could re simply repeat my last interjection, but I am really curious. Are you telling me Kirby is butting in with his own opinion on this because he's too lazy to form an actual argument? 
Um, Kirby isn't using opinions or anything subjective in this interjection. In fact, I could argue that this interjection is much more objective than the already objective last interjection, as Kirby is pointing out how Enigma acted like Relic said there were no double battles when there are, just so it's a minority, leaving little use for the ability. Nothing about these screams opinion, if you ask me. It's simply saying Enigma is missing the point. If you ask me, Joshua, I think you're having a bad case of not paying attention and pretending you got the full story when... No, you don't. I also love how your argument against the possibility that Kirby isn't being lazy is by saying, then why should he use plus or minus in single battle? I'm just like, you fuck what might? After overlooking this, maybe you were talking about Relic, but Kirby's point isn't about plus or minus and using them in a singles battle. You said it yourself, you were starting to ramble. Something in me feels like this entire interjection was just a bunch of nonsensical rambles though if you ask me, no offense. Matter of fact, I'd be inclined to call what's left of this commentary that, or, well, I'd be wrong. The rest of the video is actually just a screen of an MLP character inside a Minecraft house with MIDI piano music playing. I'm starting to wonder if this is some sort of troll, but I won't say that out loud or else Joy will cry ten rivers or well, whatever toga lovers do. That aside, if I were to give my final thoughts, they'd be... Um... Really. This is the best that you could do. It almost feels like you are purposely not even trying, Joshua. Yeah, I'll admit, I've never been all too familiar with your content like others in the commentary community were, but I thought after what went down in the Joshua tree, that time our target got commentated on various times before Doodle came in and helped him out, you might have learned a trick or two. Instead, it seems like you threw out a bunch of random phrases about subjectivity and applied it to a situation where it didn't belong. If you don't want to describe it as that, you threw these phrases about in such a manner that I couldn't figure out the correlation between your words and those of Kirby and Luxor. That's especially true towards the end. It's just really disappointing if you ask me. Watch where you throw that in, mate. My bad. You know, I've seen like a lot of Joni's old avatars. Not like she'll be ever using them again. Last time I checked, she vanished off of the face of the earth or whatever. Oh, I miss her. So the next video we'll be covering is a video by the commentator known as The Burning Mold, in which he covers a CC rant by a man named The Bronze Show. I actually recall seeing this once and not thinking too lowly nor highly about it. I imagine I won't spend too much time on the video because of that. Though with that in mind, Bolt has stated that his opinions have changed, which I consider another way of saying disown, though there are other meanings behind this phrase that I know of first off. But even with that in mind, I'm going to use the they old CC excuse to saying, I can use this for other purposes. Torture bang number one, everything else is secondary. Whatever, let's keep going. I arguably more criticizable thing they frequently do is the voice. You know, that voice. Hey guys, I'm Megadjo here, and today we're going to be taking a look at this awful commentary video created by a certain someone by the name of Obvious Troll 69 There's just so much to talk about in this video, and believe me, I would love to deconstruct every single horrible place in this video, but unfortunately I have to cut it down because we would be here all day. They use this annoyed explainy voice to make it seem like they're just so done with whatever they're talking about, and they think they're so above criticizing these things, but they have to stoop low enough to do it just this once. Except it's for every video, on every channel in this community. Being this snooky, annoyed, know-it-all character doesn't make you look superior to who you're criticizing. It's annoying, if anything, and it makes you look petulant and condescending. And the fact that a large majority of the people in the community do this just makes it even worse. Oh boy, time to burn down this generalization. First off, if you want to show that voice, you would have been better off getting multiple clips of commentators, and not only does your voice not match the character you're making, but also looks like you're strawmanning the entire community by not using actual clips. And second, the issue of all commentators, or most commentators, sound the same, hasn't been a legit issue since, what, 2012, 2013? Since then, we've had more variety in the commentators' personalities than ever before. Like, say, let's look at the differences between Bubbling Brook and Megatron DBZ. One has a more passive and calm personality, and the other has a more jokey and edgy personality. Okay, but the problem doesn't necessarily lie in the presenter's personalities, it lies in how the presenter presents themselves as they articulate, which Bronzo claims more often than not happens to be like this style that appears in pretty much most commentaries. Yeah, Bubbling Brook and Megatron DBZ have different traits and personalities within their commentaries, but their personalities aren't the factor that means Bronze's claim is absolutely bullshit. Not helped by the fact that despite your desire for Blaze to actually show that voice, you just give us the names of your targets and tell us their differences, which, if I'm gonna be honest, is only barely better. It's like the poor man's way of showing proof here. It actually seems pretty peaceful out here. Now the most important part of any commentary is the editing. 
No, no, it's not. You can make a video of the movie maker and you'd still fit in with some of the big boys in this community. Like, the best edits that I've seen are just moving the stills around a little bit. Nothing fancy, just basic minimal editing. Just switching from still to still, cutting to the video they're talking about, and occasionally cutting to another video for cheap reference humor. I'm not saying I can't respect your opinion unless you have good editing, but it does help. It's hard to take you criticizing people's content seriously when you only leave the minimal amount of production value required to make your videos watchable. And you did not just say that, but you, you, you couldn't have. Play that again, please. It's hard to take you criticizing people's content seriously when you only leave the minimal amount of production value required to make your videos watchable. And this point is so bad on so many different levels. I do not know where to start. One, maybe the reason people use this style is because the community is outright called the slideshow commentary community. Um, okay, well, let's play a game of 20 questions. Question one, how in the name of Lord Toby did you actually think that using the fact that we're called the slideshow commentary community is in any way a good way to argue against what Braun said about it being hard to take commentators seriously due to the editing style being very simplistic? Bringing up our style would not its own invalidate his feelings. Now, see, I imagine a second ago that maybe this point fell victim to poor structuring, and maybe you were arguing against everything that had come before that line. In that case, look, I understand that you wanted to highlight that specific line, because of course you were going to spend some time arguing that in a minute. But on the other hand, I have to say then, saying all of your other arguments really... Well, it really shouldn't have been written here, because this then sounds like you're applying all of your arguments against this one part of the interjection, which, yeah, it is not a good. Don't run away from me, you bitch! I know some of you will say, but that's just my editing style, and I could say that's a valid point, but it becomes less valid when literally every single person in your community has the exact same editing style. I only see like three or four commentators in this community trying to differentiate themselves from everyone else, but other than that, a majority is just the same template with a different personality. Now let's move on to your next example, Blake the movie fan, who is pretty much the poster boy for why not to use a camera, or at the very least an example of everything that can possibly go wrong when using a camera, because you either get dead silence and stutters, or a lot of jump cut. I mean, sure, there's no arguing that his way of presenting himself is unique to the CC, but unique doesn't automatically equal good. Okay, but why though? Okay, so it's this Blaze the Movie fan talk that's really grinding my gears right now because oh my goodness, this is dumb. This is backwards. This is my school year this year. Holy shit. So you go on this tirade about how the fact that despite Blaze the Movie fan having a different style, uh, that doesn't make him good, which doesn't at all crush the point Bronze was trying to make, which was that it was a different style. Yeah, it may suck, but does that really change anything? No, it's still a huge difference compared to what other commentators output. Whatever, I think I'm just gonna drop this bowl before it rolls any longer. If you want my personal feelings on this video, I felt like there was an attempt here, but that was negated by you consistently missing Bronze's point like nobody's business on several occasions, as if this was your first time hearing these points. Combined with some poor structuring here or there, I was wondering, what the hell am I watching? Oh yeah, there are some good points for sure in this video, but I didn't walk out of this video feeling satisfied. You know, actually, I know. I know Bronze's video is over a year old, but... Maybe I'll cover it someday, but not today. I mean, unless it's the next video in this chain, though I doubt that'll be the case, my school's too broke. So anyways, with that video gone, I can only imagine what's coming up next. Oh, oh boy, this one's been a long time coming. You know, the further the rabbit hole, the more I start to question whether or not school is useful or not. Whatever, so the next video we'll be covering comes from a commentator named Umbris, also known as Milan, which I'll be calling them through the rest of the video. The context of this video goes something like this. In April of this year, the Persona 5 character dubbed Joker was added to the fighting game Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as a part of a DLC pack which included a new stage and some music. One of those tracks happened to be a theme song called Wake Up, Get Up, Get Out There, which by the way is an absolute banger, go listen to it if you haven't already. Soon after this DLC pack came out, a gaming journalism website named Kotaku made an article about the song in which the writer assumed that the song used the word, the R word, which is a slur against the disabled. In truth though, the song simply said, retort it, and Kotaku really fucked up when it came to not realizing this. But anyways, Umbers made a commentary on the article which I will now be covering. As I've been meaning to cover this for a few months, let's just get this over with. In the track wake up, get up, get out there, if you skip to around 148 into the track, you'll reach a section of the song where words are softly spoken rather than sung. You know, this video is three minutes. This part of the video takes up two thirds of that, and honestly, that really just... 
you know, doesn't really stick with me. I understand you had a text-to-speech guy going on in the background, which likely made it to where you couldn't exactly speed the voice up, so why not get this part of the video where the article is going on, render it, speed it up, re-render it, and then put it in the video? It's not helped with the fact that this is only really lightly expanding on stuff that we already know thanks to your context, so while I understand why the article is here, I don't understand why it had to be this freaking long. After around 157 it appears the term retarded is used and followed up by the assertion that I can say it. The official lyrics for the song, curiously enough, does not include this spoken word section. This is our transcription of what's said. Oh, hi. Are you ready? Ready to pick up the pieces. Let's go. Let's play. Retarded. I can say it. Are you ready? Ah. The term retarded is considered a slur against people with mental disabilities. It has been commonly used as a pejorative term to diminish the capabilities of those with certain mental health conditions, and is widely accepted as a term which should not be used in English-speaking parts of the world. In fact, many parts of the world are trying to phase it out of medical texts and replace it with terms like intellectual disability. Needless to say, this does not exactly fit Nintendo's family-friendly image, nor seem an especially appropriate inclusion in a game with a 12 rating or indeed any game. As well as that odd detail of the official lyrics not including this section of the song, it's also the case that another version of this theme, which features in Persona 5, Dancing in Starlight, removes this section entirely. We have reached out to both Nintendo and Persona 5's European publisher Deep Silver for comments, and will update this article with any response. So, from what I am gathering here, you listen to the song, heard a word, and didn't bother listening to the song multiple times at a high volume or even slowing the song down. You decided to just go your way and say, oh, this song is offensive towards disabled people. Which, by the way, if you do your research on the singer, Lin whatever the hell, you learn that she is Japanese. Okay, Japanese is her first language. Therefore, she doesn't know how to pronounce English all that well. We call that English, fellas. Mm. About that, to argue the first thing, mm, I understand how people perceive certain songs can vary, and at face value, Kotaku mishearing retorted as the R word is very stupid sounding, but, well, let's actually take a listen to the song in question. Let's go, let's play, retarded, retarded. For those who don't understand, OR is meant to be pronounced as OR, however the singer pronounces the ORT part as ART, which is likely why the article writer misunderstood. You would presume the article writer must have not listened to the song more than once or at a high volume to make sure they got it, but if the pronunciation of the sound is completely wrong, how would the article writer have known at all that this was not the R word? Now you'll probably respond by simply saying context clues and <laughs> oh, uh, chief, we got a problem. Given the other things the writer threw out, which was that afterwards the singer states, I can say it, which could imply that the singer knows that this word is derogatory and doesn't give a shit, as well as the fact that this part of the song was apparently absent from the Dancing in the Star Night version, who could blame them for actually jumping to this conclusion? Now, I've been really debating specifically that last line. I understand that if the Kotaku article writer had knowledge that the singer was Japanese and as such, she likely wouldn't have been able to properly pronounce certain sounds or words, and maybe said writer could have thought, okay, this could be a mispronunciation. But at the same time, despite having that foresight, like, think about it. At the same time, would the fact that the singer is Japanese mean that there wouldn't be a chance that even then the writers of the song couldn't have actually written, you know, the arsenal into their song like no one's business? There are still people who use that phrase regularly like no one's business, despite the connotations of said phrase. It probably wouldn't be a surprise for a game company to throw a word like that around because of that. Now honestly, if anything, the writer of this article should have actually looked up a transcript to make sure they actually knew if that was being said, not listening to the song over and over because as I said, that couldn't have been the dead giveaway considering the wording. You're actually putting Lin's career on the line by saying this. Okay, I understand that Lean was the singer of the song, but if in a scenario where the R slur was actually used, shouldn't it be the songwriter who would be in trouble for this, not the singer? Lin's job is to simply sing the music, not write the music. Not to mention that this article comes off as racist, which I know might be the intent, but just because you had good intentions doesn't mean that your actions don't have consequences. Wait, the fu- how in the name of Tomi or God above does this article even remotely come off as racist? No, I'm gonna sit here. Give me a few minutes to figure this out. No answer? Okay then, I guess I can start. Directly looking at the article, you should already know that the main point of the article is to point out the usage of the word, you know, the R slur, in a song for Persona 5, and while this may be wrong, that's really all there is to the article. This article does not even admit any implications of racism, as nothing is brought up about the singer's manner of speaking, how this could have potentially led to the usage of the word, or really anything that could give you the idea that the writer is being a racist. Now in the comment section, you explain your reasoning to Dwebly, by saying it seems like they are misunderstanding the speech patterns of the Japanese. As Megatron DBZ said in response, the writer simply misunderstanding the words isn't actually racism. Ignorant at worst, but even then, I doubt that, and even then, the intention wasn't malicious or done with antagonism as racism is. 
Unless you're doing some sort of conspiracy theory, but you pass this off as some sort of fact that they were clearly being racist, when as I said, no, it's clearly just a misunderstanding. Plus, if this was the case, which it isn't that she is clearly saying retorted, retarded isn't a widely known word in Japan because it is English. Okay, yeah, but let's say this was a scenario where the word was actually used. So yeah, sure. Let's say the word isn't widely known in Japan. That excuses the word ending up in the song because the writers wouldn't have given it a second thought, but that still doesn't even really change the fact that this isn't an issue because the word still has negative connotations attached to it. Sure, the writers and singers may not have known about that, but it doesn't excuse it. Like, I can make the assumption that because there aren't many blacks in Japan, and so they wouldn't have any history with the word, the n-word isn't commonly known in Japan either. So let's say there was a song with the word nigger in it. Yeah, it'd be there because of ignorance and that'd be understandable, but that doesn't necessarily make it okay. Also, retard is a technical musical term. Yes, I'm glad you know that, Umbris. Now, I wish you actually knew why this point actually doesn't work in your favor, though. Since I am an orchestra student, though, it does give me an excuse to strap myself, so step aside real quick. If you're wondering what I mean, would put side by side the former medical term, you know, the arsler, and the musical term, retard, with an I, they both have different meanings in their respective contexts. Retard means that the tempo of the song begins to slow itself down. It has the same root with his cousin for sure, but in the end they lie in a different path. Though the point of this line could have been to say that what could have potentially been said, if retarded wasn't what it was said, may have been retarded, not the R word. However, need to note that it's simply rit, retard, or retardando, not retarded. That phrase is not exist in music, so if this was what you were trying to imply, you instead make it obvious you don't actually understand why you're saying this. Either way, you don't really give the writer any idea why this information could be useful in the first place. You just bring it up and, well, walk away. By the way, the last part about the part not being in other versions makes, like, no sense. Because you do not link the Persona 5 dancing or the original versions. People would have to go out of their way to find the song just to find out if it is even there or not. For what I have found, this part was just added to Ultimate's version, so it wasn't removed. It was never there to begin with before Ultimate. It all returns to nothing. It all comes tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. You know, I'm, I'm gonna give up after this part, but before I give up, Umbris, why? Basically, what I'm getting from this interjection is that apparently the area where the whole retorted line happened wasn't in the original game, it was actually made for the Smash Ultimate soundtrack. So it was actually apparently never actually removed from the Persona 5 dancing game, meaning that the Kotaku article writer just made a big assumption. Bruh! See, there's a reason this point has drained literally all the energy from me, because look, remember when I showed the audience an example of how the phrase retorted was pronounced? Well, guess what time that video came out? Uh, oh my gosh. The most ironic part of this whole interjection though was how you bring up how Kotaku didn't list any of the songs they talked about, yet despite you talking about them too, you in turn didn't link the songs you were talking about. Wrap your head around that one, audience. Anyways, so with that interjection being wrapped up, I'm done. <sighs> Anyways, I'm just gonna push on for one more video. I don't feel like giving up. Plus, school still seems to be in sessions and I'm not going back until it's over. So anyways, what's next, RNG? Uh, oh, my goodness, there is no way. All right, change of plans. Uh, I'll take my wrist with the race to school, but I've got to head home fast. This needs Neo all CC attention right now. Um, have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Uh, gotta go.